he would come up and have a conversation. If you had a question, he would answer that question. If you needed to come lecture in your fire department, for your organization, uh, he, he would say, absolutely. And if they asked him what he wanted for pay, he said, lunch is good. He was just that type of person. He wanted to educate anybody and everybody he could to make them better people, to make them better firefighters or better Marines. Uh, he took the job seriously. He had high standards. Level uh, the bar was set up high for anybody that was in his company. The guys that did join his company were the best of the best in the FDNY. And unfortunately, we lost a lot of them. On 9 11, uh, he was the chief of special operations command in the FDNY. He responded to all emergencies in New York City. And being a task force leader for New York City, he was also responding to any emergency in the nation or the world. At the Oklahoma City bombing, he was the operations chief and ran the operations out there. 1993 bombing in the World Trade Center. We run the operations down there. He had his hand in everything. He learned by experience, not by reading books. He actually was out there doing it. So on 9-11, he responded from where I am now in Roosevelt Island. He came through the tunnel. He got to the towers. The, uh, obviously, whenever he went to an event, they always looked for him to give them advice. He'd come in calm and collective as he was. You know, he kind of had a lot in his brain. What he wanted to do was all. When the chief in command, asked him, they respected his opinion. He was uh, last seen in the south, uh, the North Tower that I saw on video, talking to the Chief of Department, the Commissioner, giving him directions of what they needed to deal with. The south Tower came down, the First Tower came down, they all made it out alive in the uh, North Tower where they were stationed, that was their base of operations, I guess, as you would say, or the command post. Uh, he went across the street into the World Financial Center, before the smoke even cleared, him and some of his men from the Special Operations Command were back on the pile, searching for the other guys. Obviously, knew, he knew in the back of his head that another building could come down if one came down. Um, he went back in. He had over, you know, we lost 100 guys in the Special Operations Command, plus 342 firefighters. So he knew he had plenty of guys still in that building. He stayed at the foot of the tower there, where the uh, tower and the uh, Marriott Hotel met, because I had friends that saw him within minutes of him dying. And he ordered everybody out of that area. He stayed with one other gentleman, another chief. And they were rescuing one civilian. He was a heavy set gentleman. They were trying to get him over the wall. And he ordered everybody out and he stayed. And I think that comes from, uh, I would say, his Marine background. We don't leave any man behind, I understand. And I, I think that's what he held throughout his life. Um, we talk about it often at home with my mom. And I think we all come to the agreement that if he did survive, that second tower, he, he wouldn't be the same person that he, that he is, or he would by that he was. Um, he stayed there to the end. He knew it was bad, but he also knew he had his men in that building. He wasn't leaving. Uh, he stayed, the second tower came down, and he was killed by the second tower. I, myself, and I think my family's comfortable with his actions. I don't think he would have any other way than the way he did. Uh, he left, left behind a great legacy. He did many things, he touched many lives throughout his career. His relationship with Seaburst was special. I think he was like a proud father, a proud peacock, when they started hooking up again back in 1998. He could bring them into his FDNY facilities, into his wrestling school, and train them. Uh, he loved it. He loved every minute of it. He was 39 years on the job, and you figured by the end of your career, you'd stop and slow down a bit. But his daily ritual would come to, come to work, and he'd take his three or four mile run around the island just to get going. I know that comes from the Marine Corps. He always stayed in shape. He was 63 when he was died, but he ran almost every other day. And he continued playing ice hockey with the old timers. So he loved staying in shape. Um, but his ritual was, you know, get that workout in and start his day at 7 o'clock and work till 7, almost five days a week. We couldn't understand it. With all that time on the job, my mom couldn't understand why he wanted to do that. But it was just in his blood. He realized talking about it now. That's part of what his cloth was. You know, and I, I truly believe it came. 1956 when he became a Marine. Uh, he didn't have much of a family. His dad died when he was seven. Uh, two older brothers were firefighters. Uh, he definitely became an uh, icon of the fire department. And I'm proud to follow his footsteps. I don't try to be an icon. I would never do that. But some of his visions and what he wanted done, I feel it's my job now to carry that on. I am a chief in, in the special operations where he was. I am a task force leader in New York Task Force One. And I'm proud to say the New York City Fire Department is back on its feet after 10 years. And uh, we recovered, we're better than ever. The training has improved, and the Marines know that as they come up, they're at our training facilities.
And in conclusion, uh, I am proud and honored to be here to present this deal for the FDNY. This deal has a lot of meaning to me. Obviously, the towers were built with this steel, and they fell. I spent nine months on that pile climbing over the steel, looking for my dad, looking for fellow firefighters, looking for anybody that we could recover to bring back to their families. So thinking of it that way, I didn't think about it until I came down what the significance of the steel meant to me. Um, and now going back to the site, and uh, some of you have been up there, you know, the steel is going back up. There's more steel going up, and it's stronger than ever. Eventually that site will be going. I know downtown Manhattan is stronger than ever. More people have moved down there. The city's stronger in that area. And I think the steel is representative of the resolve of New York City firefighters, New York City, and the country. Thanks again for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks again for coming.